How's it going, my peeps? I'm here with a raw review, raw results video. I know I said I wouldn't do them on a regular basis anymore because I couldn't watch Raw Live, but things happen, and tonight I could actually watch Raw Live. So that's why there is a results video tonight. Uh, there's probably not going to be one next week or the week afterwards, but hey, this week I can actually watch Raw Live, so here's a review. Anyways, Raw starts off with Brock Lesnar coming out. And he goes ahead right away, calls out Seth Rollins. He's pissed off about last week where Seth Rollins curb stomped him. And he gives Rollins 10 seconds. Rollins doesn't come out, and then Brock says, Yeah, just as I thought, when I show up, you're nowhere to be found. And then the authorities' music hits, Triple H comes out, he's trying to calm down Brock, and trying to, you know, justify Seth's actions, saying that Brock, German suplex Seth Rollins first. He then tells Brock to calm down, you know, Let's go to the back, we'll give you a big steak, you know, you could eat, and he's going to talk with Paul Heyman. And, anyways, eventually, uh, Brock Lesnar goes ahead and tells Triple H, are you here to fix things, or are you here to fight? And then Paul Heyman's like, no, 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 and then Stephanie's music hits, she comes out with Kane and Big Show. And they're also trying to calm Brock, Brock down, basically everybody's trying to calm Brock down. And then on Titantron, we see Seth Rollins, so, you know, he, he doesn't want to show up with the rest of the authority. He's in the back, you know, safe. And, uh, you know, he's talking trash uh, to Brock Lesnar, saying, you know, he's going to take the title at the Royal Rumble. Eventually, John Cena comes out, and Rollins makes fun of Cena. Yeah, and, and he actually messes up in the process. He says, you're going to tuck your leg between your and then he's like he, he realizes he just messed up so he's like you're gonna take your tail between your legs and then cena cena you know made fun of that or you know he he acknowledged that he was like i don't know how the hell i'm gonna you know tuck my legs between my legs but anyways he still says something along the lines like he's gonna knock seth's teeth down his throat or whatever and eventually that all leads to john cena trying to get ryback dolph and rowan their jobs back he goes ahead and tells Triple H, how about this, you know, if I win the title at the Royal Rumble, you give all three of them their jobs back. And then Triple H says, you already failed, you know, uh, the last time we gave you an opportunity to get their jobs back. But he, you know, Triple H says he's willing to work with Cena on this. So instead, he suggests that tonight, Cena's going to be in the matchup. And he's going to have the opportunity to get them their jobs back. If he wins the match, they're going to get their jobs back. But this time, he wants Cena to put something up on the line so he says if Cena loses though he's no longer in the title match at the Royal Rumble so then Cena you know he doesn't know what to do and then Triple H says but the decision is not going to be in your hands it's going to be in the WWE Universe's hands and the people can vote on the WWE app whether Cena should fight tonight and put his title shot on the line or not he says it's going to be a simple yes or no question and uh that was about it after that uh, it was Daniel Bryan's first match back against Bray Wyatt, and they have a pretty good matchup. Uh, the crowd was even chanting, you know, this is awesome, and Kane ended up interfering. Daniel Bryan was on the outside, well, he was on the apron to be specific here, and Bray Wyatt was inside the ring, and the referee was kind of distracted looking at Bray, and so Kane grabbed Daniel Bryan's feet, and he took him off the apron, so Daniel Bryan went face first onto the apron, and then he put him back in the ring where Bray Wyatt finished Daniel Bryan off with Sister Abigail, went for the cover, and won the match. After the match was over, Kane gets in the ring, he goes ahead and chokeslams Daniel Bryan and then starts punching him. And you can hear Kane yelling at Daniel Bryan, nobody makes a fool out of me. And then backstage we get a uh, click reunion. Well, in the beginning it's uh, Triple H in the office and then Scott Hall comes in along with Kevin Nash. They're wearing NWO t-shirts and uh, they make fun of Triple H for wearing a suit. And uh, then Kevin Nash tells him to drop the suit and, you know, come with them, hang out with them. And Scott Hall even says, you're still doing the authority gimmick? And um, <laughs> then after that, uh, HBK comes in. And uh, HBK says, or you could come with us in the Legends panel and uh, give us some water. And then he says he's kidding. And then Triple H is wondering where X-Pac is. And then after that, we see what I thought was X-Pac. I thought it was him, really. It was actually uh, Damien Sandauer, Damien... What should I call him? Damien Sandpack? I don't know. I thought it was... I really thought it was X-Pac. 
because he really looked like him. <laughs> he just comes in and he starts doing the suck it a bunch of times. And uh, I, I thought it was Xbox. Um, and then all of a sudden, I, I see the actual Xbox come in. And then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, sh who is that then? And then I'm like, oh, it's Damien Sandow. Or Miz Dow. No, well, it's Damien Sandow. It's only Miz Dow when he's actually, you know, uh, copying the Miz. And uh, then Xbox, he finds it funny. And, you know, they're about to do the two sweet taunt, but the Miz comes in, and Miz tells Damien Miz out that he's his stunt double, not, you know, Xbox or whatever. And then the Miz wants to do the taunt with, you know, uh, with the rest of them, with Triple H and Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, uh, HBK, but uh, none of them do it with the Miz, and actually Kevin Nash pretends like he's about to do it, but instead he, you know, flips his hair, or, you know, uh, puts puts his hand on his hair, and then the Miz just leaves, and, uh, and then Scott Hall tells Triple H, what kind of show are you running, and then Triple H looks down in disappointment and says he's ashamed, and then following that, we get the Legends panel, Byron Saxton goes ahead, and the first question he asks them is whether they think John Cena should put his title shot on the line to try and get Rowan Ryback and Ziggler's jobs back. And uh, Hogan and HBK say yes, while Ric Flair says no. And that was about it. There was no explanation. You know, they, they didn't go into detail. And then after that, they talk about the Rumble, and uh, they give their picks for the Rumble. And HBK goes ahead and says that he thinks Bray Wyatt is going to win the Royal Rumble. Uh, Hulk Hogan says that he thinks Daniel Bryan's gonna win it, and then after that, Ric Flair says that he thinks, uh, who did it? Yeah, he said Dean Ambrose. He thinks Dean Ambrose is gonna win the Rumble, and then Big Show's music hits. He comes out, and pretty much he runs down all three of them. He, uh, talks about how, you know, he, does, he doesn't see legends in this ring, and he says, you know, Hogan, you know, he beat Hogan in WCW uh, for the title, he chokeslammed Ric Flair in WCW and took his top, top spot, and, you know, it eats Ric Flair up inside, and, you know, he hates that, and then he says... And uh, as far as HBK goes, he kind of fizzled out when Big Show was there, because he knew if he was in the ring with the Big Show, Big Show would eat him alive. And then Ric Flair goes ahead and takes off his jacket, and he chops Big Show a couple times, and then he bounces off the ropes, and once he comes back, Big Show hits him with the WMD. It kind of looked like a botched WMD, because it looked like Big Show hit him in the chest. But anyways, so he knocks him out by punching him in the chest. And then after that... Reigns music hits, he comes out, gets in the ring, he gets face to face with the Big Show, who warns him, but Reigns punches Big Show a couple times anyways, Big Show goes for the choke slam. Reigns gets out of it, he bounces off the ropes, comes back with another punch, not a Superman punch, but a regular punch, and then he clotheslines Big Show out of the ring, and then Big Show sells uh, his arm, and he runs up the ramp, well he doesn't run up the ramp, but he walks up the ramp, and that was it for that. Afterwards, we get the pool results for the, uh, John Cena match, whether the fans want him to compete or not, and the results are 85% of the people voted yes, and 15 of course voted no. After that, we get The New Day, uh, Big E and Kofi Kingston versus Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. Uh, this time, The New Day's entrance was a bit different, where uh, they came out with microphone. Well, the entrance wasn't different, but well, the only thing different was that they came out with microphones, and they were actually talking, and they were encouraging the fans to say New Day with them, and um... Uh, you know how new, the New Day, before getting in the ring, uh, Big, Big E usually tells Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston, you know, uh, do it for the day, do it for the day, and they're like, no, I'm not going to do it, and then eventually they do it. Well, uh, yeah, this time it, would, it was Xavier Woods actually doing that and saying doing it, do it for the day because his ankle was messed up, so I guess he's injured, so he couldn't compete, so instead it was Big E and Kofi Kingston. Uh, doing the, no, I'm not going to do it, or I ain't going to do it, and then they get in the ring, and uh, yeah, so it looks like they're trying to get the fans to participate more during the New Day's entrance. Anyways, as far as the match goes, uh, like right in the beginning of the matchup, people in the crowd, uh, or like like a portion of the crowd in the corner was chanting uh, Tyson Kidd, uh, Nanny's husband, but anyways, uh, they pulled off like a a new move of theirs where Cesaro goes ahead and he puts his opponent in the vertical suplex and then Tyson Kidd goes ahead and jumps on that opponent taking him down the same time Cesaro pulls off the suplex 
Uh, so anyways, uh, the match ends when Kofi Kingston rolls up Cesaro for the victory. And then after the match, and actually, uh, during this match, Adam Rose was at ringside along with the Rosebuds. Uh, I actually thought the Rosebuds were no longer part of Adam Rose. But anyways, whatever. After that, uh, we get the NWO reunion. And uh, it's Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, and X-Pac making their way to the ring. They joke around saying that pretty much everything great ever created is because of the NWO. Uh, they, didn't, they don't get to talk too much before the Ascension's music hits and they interrupt. And then the Ascension, they say that all they see in the ring is a bunch of old dogs begging to, to be put down. And they're the guys to do it. Connor then goes ahead and says that... The Ascension were born and bred to rip and shred, and that no other team is better than the Ascension, especially not a team from WCW. And then they, they welcome the NWO to the wasteland, and Scott Hall just takes his toothpick and he throws it at uh, Connor's face. And then it looks like they're about to fight, but JBL then grabs a the microphone and he gets off uh, you know, his chair. And he says he's tired of the Ascension, you know, they disrespected the legends tonight. And he says he thought something like this would happen, so he made a call to a good friend of his, and then the crowd starts cheering because they know it's what's about to happen. And he could see under his dress shirt that he had an APA shirt, so he takes off his dress shirt and of course reveals an APA shirt. APA's music hits, Ron Simon comes out, they go inside the ring, so now... Uh, the Ascension have the APA, APA to their right and the NWO to their left. And then, uh, the New Age Outlaws music hits. They also came out and Road Dog says there's nothing like an old school party because it never ends. They get in the ring and of course now the Ascension is cornered. They they've got nowhere to go. And, uh, Billy Gunn and Road Dog go ahead and attack the Ascension in the corner. Uh, Billy Gunn even hits a Tilt a World Slam on Victor, and Connor gets sent to the outside. And then JBL starts swinging his arm, and the crowd pops for that. And, of course, you know, it's because they know the clothesline from hell is coming. So, yes, JBL hits the clothesline from hell onto Victor. And then uh, X-Pac takes off his NWO sweatshirt and reveals a DX shirt and they all celebrate and the NWO music hits and that was it for that segment. Pretty cool segment. Um, I was really excited when JBL, you know, got off the announcer's table or the, or, or the chair and the APA music hit and all that. That was cool. Following that, we get the authority and they're about to announce John Tina's opponent for tonight. They've got a guy next to them for the drum roll. And so he does the drum roll, and then they say, John Cena's opponent tonight is Seth Rollins. And so the guy stops the drum. And then they're like, why do you stop? We didn't tell you to stop. And so he resumes the drum roll, and they say, and Kane, or was it Big Show? Anyways, they say Big Show, or Kane, whatever. And then he stops once again, and then they tell him, why do you stop? We didn't tell you to stop. So he resumes the drum roll, and then they say Kane or Big Show or whatever <laughs> bottom line what I'm trying to say is it ends up being a three-on-one handicap match Seth Rollins Big Show and Kane and then they fired the drum roll guy and they say that tonight we're gonna witness the demise of John Cena after that we get a Divas tag team match it's Paige and Natalia versus Summer Rae and Alicia Fox Paige and Natalia end up winning the match when Paige uh, makes Alicia Fox tap out to the Paige tap out and uh, on commentary during the match, you had Nikki Bella and Brie Bella. So after that, and also they did announce that at the Royal Rumble, it's going to be Paige and Natalya versus the Bell Twins in a tag team match. And they also announced that the New Day is going to take on Tyson Kidd, Cesaro, and Adam Rose in a six-man tag team match on the Royal Rumble pre-show or kickoff. And following that, we get Rusev versus R Truth. Of course, this is going to be a squash match, you know, because Truth has always gotten squashed by Rusev. And uh, it was no different this time around. Rusev made quick work of R Truth and made him tap out to the accolade. We then see Seth Rollins backstage with JJ Security, and he's laughing it up about John Cena and how, you know, he's going to humiliate John Cena or beat John Cena tonight. 
and then he gets confronted by Brock Lesnar, and all of a sudden, Seth Rollins is all scared, which is odd, because last week, I recall Seth Rollins, you know, getting face-to-face -face with Brock and not being scared at all. So I guess may maybe it's because, you know, they're, the explanation is because Seth Rollins, you know, curbs on Brock, and Brock is pissed off, so now, you know, he's, I guess, afraid of Brock kicking his ass. So anyways, Brock says, don't worry, I'm not gonna hurt you right now, and he says... That tonight, you know, Seth Rollins, he can take out John Cena, you know, do them both a favor by taking out John Cena, and then at the Rumble, Brock Lesnar is going to get paid to take him out, and then Brock just leaves, and Seth Rollins still looks scared, and after that, we get a one-on-one -on -one match between Jey Uso and The Miz, and before the match began, they showed like a, like a little screen where The Miz was talking about the Royal Rumble, and how at the Royal Rumble, because he's got Damien Sandow also participating in the match, he's got two chances to win the Royal Rumble match. And when he said that, Damien Sandow or Damien Mizdow didn't really look like he approved of that. He kind of looked confused or, you know, surprised that the Miz would say that. So I think that will lead to maybe, you know, the breakup of Miz and Mizdow. But anyways, Miz ends up losing the match when Jey Uso hits a splash from the top rope. And that came time for the main event, John Cena vs. Big Show vs. Kane vs. Seth Rollins in a 3-on-1 handicap match. Now, in the beginning, it looked like it was going to be Seth Rollins and Cena, but Seth Rollins tagged out right away to the Big Show. Big Show then proceeded to beat up John Cena. Most of the match was dominated by the heels, of course, by Kane, Big Show, and Seth Rollins. Until John Cena, you know, turns things around, he starts building up momentum. He was about to hit the AA on Seth Rollins until j, &J Security, uh, they went on the apron for the distraction, and then Seth Rollins rolled up Cena, Cena kicked out of it. Uh, Cena then went for the attitude adjustment once again, but this time he hit it, and he goes for the cover, but the way he goes for the cover, uh, he was in perfect positioning for somebody to pull him out, uh, to pull him from outside of the ring to the outside. Uh, so... You know, it was obvious that either Kane or Big Show were going to pull him off Seth Rollins to break the pin. And uh, that's that's exactly what happened. Kane pulled uh, John Cena out of the ring. And so the referee then starts yelling at Kane. He's distracted with Kane. And Big Show takes advantage of that by hitting a spear. And I thought it was actually a pretty good spear. Uh, it looked, you know, like a big spear. Anyways, so he hits the spear on John Cena. And then he gets up on the apron like nothing happened. So does Kane. And then they're counting Cena out. They're at the count of eight. And Cena's still down at the count of eight. Like completely down. And then all of a sudden, once the ref counts to nine, Cena gets right up and gets back in the ring. Uh, so back in the ring, Kane gets tagged in. Kane goes ahead and he hits a choke slam on John Cena. And John Cena kicks out. And then Kane... Tags in Seth Rollins, who prepares uh, prepares for the curb stomp. But before he could go ahead and hit the, the curb stomp, we see Sting on the Titantron, and then Michael Cole is like, "Oh, it's Sting!" And then JBL's like, "No, it's just a picture of Sting." Cause Sting was just staring like in one direction, and it, you know it could have been a picture of Sting. But then uh, Sting's music hits, or you know the lights go out, and he actually moves, and he gets on the stage. And then Kane and Big Show are now off the apron, and they're looking... Well, it actually, it was Kane, Big Show, and Triple H, and they're looking at uh, Sting, who's on the stage. They're not paying attention to the ring, and Sting then points towards the ring, and John Cena rolls up uh, Rollins, and the referee counts one, two, three, until John Cena wins the match, and because of that, Ryback, Dolph Ziggler and Rowan are going to get their jobs back, and uh, John Cena quickly gets out of the ring before they could, you know, attack him, and he goes ahead in the crowd, and he starts celebrating with a little, little kid, he like hugs him, and he high fives him, and then Sting stays on stage just a little bit longer, and then he just disappears, we don't see Sting anymore, and Triple H, he's pissed off, he's taking, he's taking off the announcer's tabletop, and he's yelling at Sting, and the crowd starts chanting, We want Sting, we want Sting. And uh, then all of a sudden, when you think it's it's over, uh, Brock Lesnar's music hits. And when, th when that hits, you know shit's about to happen. Brock Lesnar comes out with Paul Heyman, and it looks like he means business. Something He's gonna he's about to beat people up. And Big Show, Kane, and Seth Rollins are in the ring, so keep that in mind. 
and uh, Brock hands the championship over to Paul Heyman. He gets in the ring, and he goes right after Seth Rollins. Of course, Big Show and Kane try and stop Brock Lesnar, but Lesnar kicks their ass too. He beats them up. He goes ahead, grabs Kane, and hits an F5 on Kane. And then he goes right after Seth Rollins once again, takes it, taking him down. But Big Show tries to stop him. So Lesnar goes ahead and hits an F5 on Big Show as well. That was pretty damn cool. And then Seth Rollins, he just gets the hell out of there. He runs out of the ring. He, he wants nothing to do with Lesnar. And uh, that about ends Raw. Brock Lesnar coming out and just destroying the authority. Destroy, beating up Kane. Well, hitting an F5 on Kane and hitting an F5 on Big Show. That was cool. I, I'd say that was the coolest raw ending in a long, long time. Just bat, just Brock Lesnar looking like a badass, you know, hitting an F5 on both. Not just Big Show, you know, we, we've we seen him hit the, the F5 on Big Show before, but he hit the F5 on Kane first, who's, who's not a, you know, light guy. He's like 300 pounds, hitting an F5 on Kane, and then right after Big Show. Uh, that was pretty cool. Uh... Yeah, like I said, uh, one of the coolest Raw endings in a while. So that got me excited about the championship matches Sunday. And I still don't know who to go with. I still don't know who's going to win the championship matches Sunday. Like, I'd say a month back or so, when it was just John Cena and Brock, even, even like the week they announced Seth Rollins, was going to be in the match. I still thought, you know, Brock is the favorite to win. But now I'm not so sure. I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll have to, I guess, think it, think it out a bit. You know, think about it and see who I think is going to win the match. And uh, who my prediction is going to be. Now, as far as the rest of the show, man, I love the um, <laughs> the APA reunion. Yeah, I, I like the segment where they beat up the Ascension. I'm not... I'm not the biggest fan of the Ascension. I don't know. To me, like, I'm not entertained by the Ascension. I know they just debuted like a couple weeks ago, but I I don't know. I just don't find them entertaining. And uh, seeing them get destroyed by you know the APA and New Age Outlaws, that was cool. I like that. As far as the Legends panel, I don't know. I didn't see a point to it. It was. <laughs> It just it wasn't as cool as the NWO uh, segment with the returning APA and all of that. Uh, I was surprised though that none of the guys in the panel said that Reigns was their pick to win the Rumble. Maybe it's you know they did that so it could be a well I don't, I wouldn't would call it a surprise but <laughs> I I don't know but I was expecting one of them actually I was expecting uh, Ric Flair to say that he thinks Reigns is going to win the Rumble. Uh, I thought maybe even Hogan would say that Reigns was his favorite. Uh, as far as HBK, when HBK said that he thinks, he was talking about, when he was talking about who he thinks is going to win the Rumble, he was talking about somebody who's a bit out there, you know, who's not all there in the head or whatever. I thought he was going to say Dean Ambrose. I was like, okay, he's either going to say Dean Ambrose or Bray Wyatt. But I, I was thinking more Dean Ambrose, but, you know, he said Bray Wyatt's and then uh, Ric Flair went on to say that he thinks Dean Ambrose is uh, going to win the Rumble. Also, I pretty much liked all the segments with Brock. <laughs> Whenever Brock would appear on screen. Uh, I noticed now, in this feud, Brock's, Brock's talked probably more than he has since his return. Uh, and I mean his return back in, what, what was it, 2011 or whatever? When he uh, first came back and attacked John Cena. He's, he's, he's been doing a lot of talking. Uh, well, not, not that much, but <laughs> he's been doing a lot more talking now than he has uh, before. Uh, you know, Paul Heyman still does most of his talking, but it's cool to see also Brock, you know, confront Seth Rollins uh, backstage and, you know, do some talking himself, too. Also, I'm still, like, excited about that ending because that, that was really cool. When's the last time you saw a heel... You know, assuming Brock is still healed, because I don't, I don't think this was a face turn. I think this was just Brock being a badass. You know, <laughs> uh, the guy who broke the streak. You know, uh, when's the last time we saw a heel go ahead, go out there and beat up a heel faction by himself? He went out there, he freaking f five Kane. You know, the big red monster. Although I will admit, he's not necessarily the big red monster anymore because he loses 
uh, before I'd say like 95% of the mat his matches, but now it's like 98%, maybe 99%. <laughs> uh, and this is coming from, you know, again, I used to be a really big Kane fan. You know, I love the big red monster, Kane. But anyways, yeah, hitting an F5 on Kane, hitting an F5 on Big Show. And, uh, you know, Seth Rollins just cowering out, cow or cowering away, running away from him. That was an awesome ending. Really like that. Um, as far as The Miz and The Usos, uh, I feel that's been going on for so long now. Like, the tag team division right now is... It seems like when there's a feud in the tag team division, it just runs, runs on for way too long. It, it lasts for way too long. It's like these guys, they have... Like when Goldust and uh, Goldust and Sardust were tag team champions, or they when they were feuding with the Usos, they'd have a match with the Usos every single week on on Raw and SmackDown all the time on Main Event Two. You'd have Goldust versus Jay Uso or Jimmy Uso a bunch of times, and now it's the same thing, but with you know The Miz and Jay Uso or Jimmy Uso. So hopefully at the Rumble it's the end <laughs> for that feud. Uh, whether, you know, Miz and Miz out win or, or the Usos win, I just don't want to see it anymore, you know? I want a new feud. We've got the New Day right now. We've got Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. Why not Cesaro and Tyson Kidd, you know, win some number contenders match to take on the Usos? And speaking of that, um, I'm not sure why they're <laughs> they're pairing up Cesaro and uh, Kidd with Adam Rose. I mean, I, I understand that, you know, they were dressed up as Rosebuds so they can attack the New Day a couple days ago, but uh, uh, wasn't that just, you know, a way for them to attack the New Day? Why are they still teaming up with Adam Rose? I don't know. But, uh, and also they're going to team up with Adam Rose once again. Actually, I'm wrong. They didn't team up with Adam Rose, but he was at ringside. But they're going to team up with Adam Rose uh, at the Royal Rumble. Uh, I'm hoping, you know, if they have another match, which they, which they probably will, that it's a normal contenders match so we can get, you know, a new feud when it comes to the tag team championships and maybe new tag team champions, whether it be uh, the New Day or Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. I like both tag teams. I know some people don't like the New Day, but I like the New Day. Uh, I don't have, like, I, I don't have any problems with the New Day. Uh, like I said, like the New Day and also like Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. Uh, and I'm hoping one of these two teams, you know, gets the tag team championships sometime soon. Uh, hopefully not the Ascension. I, I really hope the Ascension doesn't get to that point. Doesn't get to that point and win the wins the tag team titles. I, like I said, I, I'm not entertained by the Ascension. But anyways, this video is starting to run a bit too long. I don't want to talk too much. But I'll say this: I'm excited for the Rumble, the actual Rumble match itself. And the championship match between Brock, Cena, and Rollins. I really don't know who's going to win that as far as the Rumble and who I think is going to win the Rumble. Uh, of course, I've got, you know, my picks. I, uh, like, it, it, when it comes to the Rumble, it's usually, although there are 30 superstars in the match, really, when you think about it in a realistic way, you know, there's there's about, like, two guys or maybe three guys that could realistically win the matchup. And uh, at the moment, I'd say, for me, I think there's two guys that could possibly win the match. Maybe three. But anyways, uh, as far as a rating for tonight's show, I'd give it like a, hmm, I don't know, eight maybe? I think that's fair. Yeah, I'd give it an eight on ten or, yeah, eight on ten. <laughs> so, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can click that like button. Stay tuned for tomorrow. I'll post up a new My Career episode. With that said, I'm out. See you guys.